I'm going to say you can't. Maybe you can. Um, one of the nice things about Elasticsearch, one of the things that sort of touts about itself is the ability to flexibly adjust uh, the schema of your documents. Like uh, Lucene and Elasticsearch and Solar, these are, uh, they like to claim themselves as the, the original NoSQL um, data stores. So you can just put whatever you want into it and you have, don't have to formally define all these relationships. Kind of true, kind of not true. On a certain level, you start digging a little bit deeper and you do see that, well, it's helpful to tell the system the, the types of the data that you're sending in. You know, is this a string? Is this an integer, a float, or whatever? Um, is this a Boolean? Is this a... So it, it helps to have a rudimentary schema, if only on that level. Even more so, uh, there's different kinds of strings or text fields, and you want to do different kinds of analysis on those fields um, because this is going to help with performance and it's going to help with the relevancy of the different kinds of queries that you're running. So it's great to um, be capable of adjusting that schema over time. Now the problem with this, the challenge with this, if you think about it, Elasticsearch is number one job. It's primary job. It's reason that it exists is to create an index of your data. You give it documents and it creates data structures on disk which are able to be efficiently queried. That's the only reason it exists. Everything else is secondary to that job. Um, now the, the problem that we get when people want to kind of get in there and tweak data that's already in the system, you know, they want to update just one field of their document, they want to um, you know, they want to go and change how the, the, these big blobs of text are then kind of split up and diced down and turned into tokens is, well, your data doesn't really look that way anymore when it's in the system. It is split up all the, all the tokens and terms that came out of that text field are put into a dictionary. And then there's a map of where these terms are in which document identifiers they occur in and how often and with which frequencies and all that kind of stuff. So the data on disk of an index kind of looks a lot different than what you're putting in. And so uh, because Elasticsearch, or really because Lucene, the indexing library underneath, is so optimized towards this problem of building an index, you sort of lose some of the nice things that you're used to in, in other kinds of data stores. Uh, and like that kind of atomic updates of individual fields and values and that sort of thing like you might have in a Postgres or a MySQL. The trade-off, of course, being that you get this immense power to then go and query for this data. Um, but yes, we do kind of need to work around that every now and then. And one of those times is I have a bunch of data, but I just found out that I need to slightly tweak how we do the analysis of these text fields, how we break them up into terms that can be more easily matched or better results for our customers. So that's the preamble. I like to be thorough. Um, how do I change the mapping of an existing index? Really the best answer is to create a whole new index. Uh, I'm assuming that the question means like I have a field and I want to change how that field behaves. I want to add a new kind of analysis and that's gonna have a material impact on, on my searches. And so when you're in this kind of situation, it really pays to be good at indexing. This is a theme that keeps coming up. It really pays to be good at taking all of your original data and then sending it back into Elasticsearch. Um, and um, so the best way to do this is Elasticsearch gives us a nice mechanism called aliases. An alias is just a name, uh, like you're in every index has a name. An alias is just a name that points to one index or a set of indexes. And so any request that goes against that alias will get just forwarded on natively in Elasticsearch to the index that you're asking for. Um, and so what you will typically want to do when you first create your index is create your index with some sort of versioned naming scheme, whether it's you know production users version one or production users 2015, 1030, right? And um, give your index a name that is specific to that point in time, expecting that maybe someday you're going to throw that index away and replace it. Because when you do that, you can create an alias for yourself 
that is just your base index name, excuse me, production users. And you can point it at that versioned index name. And your application doesn't have to be aware of that point in time versioned index. You just It just talks to the alias. Uh, so that later on when you do need to re-index because, you know, we just can't get a, can't get around it anymore. You'd spin up your job and send in a bunch of data to a new index, production users v2, production users you know, 2601. And, and uh, when your re-index is done, you modify the alias. And you say the alias, this alias now points to that index. So that is, um, you know, I'm curious if that's going to get worked on. I could imagine, we can imagine certain technical ways where maybe uh, search engines of the future could be a little bit smarter about how they handle their analysis. Um, but I would say, practically speaking, for the foreseeable future, if you need to change the mappings and analysis of an index for data that already exists, you're going to have to re-index. So being good at re-indexing is, is helpful. Fortunately, the one way where this, the one time this doesn't really apply is if you're adding a new field, you can just add the new mapping. Um, and uh, there's nothing stopping you from adding a setting to a mapping for a new field. And so that actually gives you some flexibility to maybe backfill an index if you, for whatever reason, you know, the cost of reindexing is too high and you just want something pragmatic out now that you can afford to allow to kind of backfill over time, then adding a new field with a new name and a new configuration is a good way to do it. Um, this can be really helpful because in a lot of cases, when you are trying to really dial in relevancy, you may actually have one field, you may have one semantic field, like the title of an object. You may actually want to index it into multiple fields in order to get subtly different kinds of analysis. And so there's nothing stopping you from adding a new kind of analysis in a new field. So you'd have like title, you'd have title with French linguistic stemming, right? Or title with n-gram analysis for autocomplete, title and autocomplete. Um, and you'd have several different um, variations on that field. So there's nothing stopping you from adding a new field to your mapping and then kind of backfilling the value uh, in whatever order you choose. So that's that's another option. Um, there you are still re-indexing in a sense for any documents that already exist in, in the database, but um, really accepting the fact that you have to re-index, we're kind of looking for how do we do this pragmatically. So, oh, um, Dan, Dan Paws in chat uh, put up a pretty good tool there in Elasticsearch re-index. Um, so uh, speaking pragmatically again to um, to dealing with reindexing, maybe if it's annoying for you to drive that out of your primary data store, you can you can do uh, a what's called a scrolling search through your index. And if you're storing the actual original source fields of your documents, which is on by default, there's nothing stopping you from pulling those documents back out of your out of Elasticsearch itself and then pushing them back in. To Elasticsearch, and so there are several tools that actually do this. This uh, Elasticsearch reindex tool, I believe, it's just on scanning the README, it seems like it's doing that. There's another one by um, TaskRabbit, I think, called Elasticsearch Dump, which will do a scrolling search, and you can use that to pull out of a primary and index into a staging, for example, or to um, take like a huge JSON dump for a backup, a local backup. Um, the performance is going to be debatable. You're, you're now slightly competing for resources on your Elasticsearch cluster versus pulling from your primary database and pushing to Elasticsearch. Uh, I believe Elasticsearch 2.0 and Elastic are going to be creating some sort of paid commercial plugin for re-indexing, but it's, I can't imagine it functioning in any other way than a scrolling search that then reinserts back into your index. So that's really kind of a pragmatic option there. So 